welcome to this week's Sunday garden video and welcome to the greenhouse because it has been raining but I'm not going to complain about the rain because it has been well needed. Now I'm going to start the video I have some announcements. First of all remember last week I was saying how I wanted to give away a copy of Joanne's book well her copy arrived so if you saw last Sunday's video or was the last Thursday's video anyway my creative bestie has a new book out it's called furniture flips i ordered a copy i pre-ordered one and my copy came well, she gave me a signed copy at her book launch so i said i would give it away i'm also gonna give look who i found look who i found buried in my office <laughs> i'll sign this as well i don't think this one is signed and um, i will sign this joanne's one unfortunately isn't signed and she lives in Tipperary, so I've no way of getting it signed um, in time. Listen up and listen. Oh, that was my shoe. That wasn't me farting. That was my crock. <laughs> anyway, because of scammers and spam, this is how we're going to do the giveaway. Go to my Instagram. It's the one that has the verified tick on it. So we ne we're not messing. I'll put a picture in here. On the top corner there's a pinned post it's just like a little garden it's gonna be like a secret giveaway there is a garden um reel comment a book emoji on that follow me and follow joanne i'll put her instagram here you can just follow her and put a book emoji on it and what i'll do is i'll pick a winner on the what date is it sometimes it takes a couple of days for people to see my videos so I don't want to drag the arse out of a competition, but what if we say July 9th? Because this video will be going up on the 26th. So that gives us two weeks. Let's say the 10th because that's a Sunday. So on the 10th of July, I'm going to make a note. 10th of July, pick winner. I will post it anywhere in the world. Yeah, at. Okay, post, pick comp winner, Daddy. Um, I will post these anywhere in the world, does not matter the price of the uh, postage and you will get the two books. So, to recap, go to my Instagram on the pinned post, comment a book emoji, follow me, follow Joanne. I will send a direct message from the account with the blue verified tick that you have commented on for your postal address. And that's all I will ask for. So your full name, your postal address. Then I will post it and I'll send you a tracking link for the item. I will not ask you for your credit card details. I will not ask you for your PPS number, your social security number. No, only your address so I can post you your price, okay? And just a thing on scammers because they just get more and more sophisticated. So. I only have, the only accounts I have on social media are my Instagram, my YouTube. I do have a Facebook, but I'm not active on it. I will never ever send you a personal message on any, any platform. Um, these scammers are really sophisticated. They clone pages to look like pages and a few people in the past have fallen for them. They'll be like, I've blocked most of the keywords that they use in the comment section. They'll be like, message me on Telegram. They will make it sound like you, but I never ever send personal messages. The only way I interact, just to keep it simple, is I reply to comments. So I have my direct messages turned off on Instagram. So if someone sends you a direct message claiming to be me, if it's not from that account, I do not do that stuff. I also do not ask you for what I previously said, PPS number, anything like that. And if you ever buy my book, it's always from a shop, a third party shop. It's never from me. Um, it's always like, you know, Eason's Bookstation, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. It's never from a person. So it's from a shop, if that makes sense. So I will not message you looking for money like the scammers do. And the scammers are so sophisticated. They will have you in chats. I actually think half of the scammers are chatbots, like AI chatbots. But anyway, this is the world we are living in. I just thought I would say that just for anybody who might be new. Because what happens is if you do a giveaway post on Instagram, pages clone and it, I think it, they just look for keyword like giveaway or something. So if we do it this way, we're less likely to get scammers. I don't want to wreck these in the greenhouse and get muck on them, but I'm just going to pop them in. My next announcement is 
how lovely is the paint. I'm gonna be doing a bit of painting today because I'm gonna put just add here, just for disclosure. I'm doing a webinar with Colour Trend on Friday the 30th of June. It's at 12 in midday Irish time. I know that that's if you are in Australia time or America time. Um, that might conflict. However, if you sign up for the webinar, you can watch it on the replay. You'll get a link to the replay. And the webinar is about painting outdoors. So window sills, pieces of furniture, and um, flower pots, things like that. And I'll also have a reel on Instagram as well. There will be, if you are on it live, there will be a QA and a at the end. So if you do have any specific questions, if you have a piece of outdoor furniture that you're maybe unsure on how to paint um, or any steps, the Colour Trend experts will be on the call as well as me um, for the chats and you'll get like the technical end of stuff from them and hopefully I can give you some creative insights. So I'll put the link in the description if you want to sign up. It will be Friday the 30th of June at 12. And I'll actually show you some of the colours. I'm actually going to be doing a bit of painting today. Um, well, a bit of prepping because it's been raining, but the sun is out. So thankfully the temperature is warm enough so things are drying off quicker. Um, so I'll give you a little update of some stuff that's growing from that I sewed last week. And yeah, I'll show you some of the colours that I'm going to be using for my uh, webinar and creating the content for that. So yeah, it's a bit of a busy week. Oh, I just love the colours. So, I've went for a bit of an earthy palette. Now, the green you will recognise. Shout out to my nephew for being such a colour expert. This is a nettle soup. I'm going to be using this on one of the planters in the front. I actually think I'm going to do this colour as well. Um, this is nettle soup. I use this in my nephew's bedroom. It's lovely. It looks a bit brighter here, but when it's dry, it's like a lovely, has a lovely warmth to it. Now, this one is called Foxhound. Oh, sorry, Fox Mount. And it's this lovely, almost like terracotta kind of colour. And I love the two of those together. I think I'm going to paint this chair. Um, as you can see, this one is a bit bashed. So I think I'm going to use this on this chair to sit in front of the painted planter for a bit of contrast. Then I have how, oh, I'm just loving the earthy bit of colour. So this is sweet mustard, sorry, French, French mustard. And I was thinking maybe a smaller pot, like a terracotta one. And then this one is sweet caper. Yeah, sweet caper. And I thought that that might be nice for another, like a little, maybe like terracotta pots, but you don't have to paint like the whole pot because I love the patina on things. So maybe just little details like the ring on it. Um, I also have some white paint as well for the window sills. Um, I didn't pop it here because I was like, oh, it's not as interesting as the other ones. And then I have this pinky shade. This is Unveiled. And I actually used, I think, Unveiled in my niece's bedroom. So some of my OG favorite colors and some new ones. So yeah, I'm gonna be using these to spruce up some items that I already have. So it's been a week since I sprinkled those wildflower seeds. So I thought it was kind of too late in the season. Now there was a lot of rain the past kind of 24 hours. So they're well soaked. But within a couple of days, I had some germination on them. Here's two more here. Now the little white um, petals are from the tree that is above me. The flowering tree that has been buzzing with bees all week. So if you're wondering just what that is, but yeah, you can see there's lots of growth. So um, ideally they should have been sowed kind of May time, um, maybe April as well, but let's see if they flower. You can also, it said on the packet that you can sow these in autumn to flower for the following year. Um, that also applies to Ireland um, and our growing zone because I'm not sure, like normally annuals are not frost hardy, but I'm not actually sure what's in this. It just said it was like a native Irish 
wildflower mix. But yeah, I'm delighted to see some germination. So I have world's worst window sills. <laughs> These guys have not been painted in I'd say easily three or four years. I think they may have been some pandemic painting that happened the last time. Um, so all they've gotten is a bit of a power wash over the years and they haven't been repainted so I have to do a good amount of prep on these because as you can see there is flaking paint so I'm using a wire brush then a sanding block and then I'm cleaning away any kind of algae and grime with some crud cutter before I give it a fresh lick of paint and it is so satisfying to see before and afters of a good windowsill you know you're getting old when those things excite you. So I've painted furniture a good amount of times on this channel before but for anybody who's new I am just following the usual prep prime and paint steps so I am sanding the piece and keying the surface so that the primer and the paint has something to adhere to and it's just a light scuff sanding and then I'm using crud cutter so that is one of my favorite degreasers you can also use sugar sugar soap <laughs> sugar soap <laughs> sugar soap and you'll get that in the pound shop and i'm just cleaning the piece down obviously this is being outside so i have to give it some extra cleaning because there is some cobwebs in the nooks once the piece is cleaned i'm gonna give it a coat of primer i'm using prime 2 by color trend and then i'm gonna give it two coats of the top coat allowing allowing each coat to dry fully in between
sorry, my camera lens is dirty. I've just coughed. I'm also bet into a Colleen Hoover audiobook or Audible. Um, it's a book and I'm listening to it on Audible. But my phone is about to die and I'm like, oh, but it's getting juicy. So I need to go up and charge my phone and then I'm waiting on my pots and stuff to dry and I don't think I'm gonna get the barrel planter done in this video because I need to end this and edit and schedule. You know, the, the hustle don't end. Um, but I will give you a little walk around because as I'm just sitting here painting, I do need to cut the grass, but sure, that can wait. It's like loads of bees and things have just kind of gotten real full. A couple of things are dying back then as well. So yeah, I'm gonna charge me phone. I'll leave a link to the Colleen Who. It's my first time to read a Colleen Hoover book. I'm normally like a crime person or like a documentary I'll listen to. Not normally a fiction girl, but no, I'm glued to this. My friends recommended it to me. Um, yeah, let's have a look around. So in the back, something I've noticed is these nasturtiums have just come on so much and these are just little self-seeders, but I think with the grid on the back that my neighbour gave me, they are climbing up it well. I've also just noticed because there's lots of, I suppose, bushiness, the cosmos have bolted up so that they could get to the sun because they were quite small. I think there's another cosmos in the corner as well. This has gotten very full. It is a bit wild but you saw that I picked off some sweet peas. So this is my first batch and they've started to open so I've just been trying to cut back as much as I can to put them into the kitchen and enjoy them. Um, I think I said this last week that the kale bolted but I've just left it for the bees and the sunflowers I think because we had lots of rain they have gotten stronger. So there's a bit of sunshine today, so they have um, definitely gotten stronger. And also over here, so the sunflowers that I took out to sow from seed, well, I mean, some of them ain't looking too fresh, but some of them I think are gonna flower and I'm gonna put these in the front. The other batch of sweet peas, so there actually is a few flower heads on them. These ones are, ones I sowed later so I think these were late April and they don't get as much sun as the other ones up there but they still have some heads on them looking promising then over here zinnias oh, aren't they just a happy little plant so I know some of the leaves aren't looking too fresh but I have some flowers and I have more cosmos as well so these are the ones that I planted out in last week's video also, look at the size of my actual apples. Oh my God, <laughs> how cool are these? So this is a coronet and this is the one that has two different varieties on the one tree. So I have red ones down here and over here as well. And then I have some green ones. He says to my friend, oh, will you make me um, an apple like cake or an apple pie? And she says that, Eating apples are not as good as cooking apples. So that was me told. I also have dahlia heads getting ready to flower. So these actually grew quite quickly in the past kind of two weeks. So I had ones, these are ones that are in pots from last year that were in the greenhouse. So they have some flower heads on them. So I feel like, yay, they came back. I didn't kill them. I've also got lots of strawberries, but me and the blackbird are in competition with each other because he is flying in. And as soon as they're ripe, he got one during the week. I was keeping my eye on it. I said, it's going to be ripe soon. And Mr. Blackbird got it. Also, I'm just loving the color of this chair. It just looks so earthy. I think I'll keep it. As like a display chair. <laughs> Maybe put it in amongst the pots. I just love the colour of it and how it bounces off the colour of the green of the plants. Something else I noticed now I do need to have a bit of oh, a bit of a clean up in the greenhouse, but the pelagoniums, like look at the colours on them. So these are the ones that I give a little bit of abuse to, but I try not to. Now I did cut them back, I think early January and I was like I don't think this is the right time to do it because they were getting a bit leggy um, but I only killed one remember there was one here I only killed one and all of a sudden in the past kind of week 
they have flowered so I need to remember to make sure and this one as well is it this one one of them I've had for ages I think it's this one one of them I had for ages and thought I had killed it but sure there it is now this geranium this is just two geraniums and they were planted with a kind of gap between them they are huge and I still have their wild kind of patch of grass but this geranium I can't remember the name if you know which one it is do comment below um look at the color cover it gives and I remember from last year I don't remember it being this big last year I do remember though it flowered until like October time and you'll probably see there's loads of little bees in it which we love to see definitely have noticed way more insects now lupins it's gone on the wonk again this happened last year I think it might be too much rain I think there might be too much moisture in the soil but I'm not sure um, there's another lupin somewhere in here don't know if it's going to flower because it's kind of buried in the geranium like the statue Blondie's little statue is like oh I just noticed there's foxgloves behind here as well I'm trying to open so this is definitely very full and wild kind of looking I also need to cut the grass as well but sure look be grand and then I just noticed I have a couple of delphiniums dying back and there's still daffodils foliage I need to just pull them up but I do have a bit of a gap there my fists up in another thing that I probably should have moved I have this self seeded fennel and ideally like fennel you would have at the back of a border but it had self seeded and look at the size of it like it's, it's bigger it's bigger than the tree and anything else in it which I probably wouldn't mind if it was at the back but I suppose we can't really pick and choose <laughs> where these self seeders go but um I need to keep an eye on that one because I, th I, I do like it, I think it's cool but yeah it's, it's like it's, it's that's just after getting huge it's gonna be like the sunflowers <laughs> also I've noticed there is some verbena has some flower heads on it and I have lots of flower heads on this hydrangea which is in a pot looking nice and full as well actually I've just noticed there is some white this is a white hydrangea like a mop head one and it is starting to flower which we loved oh look there's actually a white one there's a head down here this is just getting um all the petals from the tree above it is what you call it opening you can hear that kettle so you know what time it is time for a cup of tea and i'm going to make some cup of tea I'm going to start editing this video and then I'm going to start finishing that book that I'm bit into. Let me know if you... Oh, I'm parched for the tea. Even though it's warm, I still need a cup of tea. Let me know if you are going to come to the webinar. Um, don't forget that you can get it on replay and they'll send you a link so if you don't want to watch it live no problem because I know the time yeah you can get it on replay they'll send you the link let me know also have some here a paint on my hands but the paint is dry actually whoever wins these if there's muck or paint on your book I'm sorry but I did try and keep them as clean as I could <laughs> let me know if you enter a little secret giveaway only people who watch this video will know about it I'm not going to share it anywhere else that's all I got for you in this week's video. I'm kind of double jobbing it because I've been painting the bits for the webinar and stuff. Um, and I need to finish the front as well. I'm going to do one of the barrels in the front, plant them up, make a little display. I think I'll put the painted chair um, with the display, take a picture, make sure it's looking all pretty. So we're going to be covering painting masonry, metal, wood. Oh, I think that's it. Oh, and I did a little terracotta pot as well. That was not on the brief. That was just me experimenting. Anyway, I will see you in Thursday's video. Or if you only watched a Sunday garden video, I'll pop a playlist here. If you want to catch up on recent ones, Sunday is garden, Thursday is home. I'll see you next Sunday then.